these things. Now the exception is the handrails, wrought iron put in by the state, concrete by Mr. Hurston and Julie Morgan. Uh, but when you get to the second stop, the pool, you might hear those marble columns saying, hold me, touch me, lean on me. Don't listen to them, okay? And don't touch any of the artwork as, as we go through. The tour today in the house, you're going to see a blue-gray tour mat. Just a few minutes, if you want to make your way to this side. From Missouri, and he's, he's thinking he's going to make it rich. What's happening in California, 1850? It's the gold rush. Now, he becomes a very successful miner, but not in California. He hits the trifecta of mines, the largest silver, copper, and gold mines in North America. Starts uh, with a uh, silver mine in Nevada, a copper mine in Utah, and he strikes most rich with the Homestake mine, a gold mine in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Give you a perspective here. Imagine you and two friends buy a mine, you start mining in 1876, the last gold was taken out of that mine in 2002. The shaft is more than one mile deep. There's actually now a museum in there. I had some of our guests say they've been in that museum. 40 million troy ounces of gold came out of that mine. Now gold today closed over 2,000 ounces. That means at today's value, that's 80 billion dollars of gold. something here to sleep in, and you can see that that grows. So in 1934 to 32, now this is the Mediterranean village on the outskirts of town. So Julie Morgan adds the colonies right, in 34, and you've got the temple facade. If you look at that, the lower two-thirds of that is, is first to fourth century. First is collected parts, fragments uh, from Rome. So you see the marble bases are different. You look carefully those. The granite columns are a different diameter. It's Miss Morgan who assembles that. He establishes it. Again, first and fourth century. Yeah. Are these, are the pillars around? Turkey. Yeah. Here's Spicer in Turkey. They're, they're Roman. Okay, very well. Here, there'll be shipping, there'll be commerce. The railroad never comes in, it never happens. And that's why it becomes the ranch. And Hearst likes it as a ranch, and uh, it's pretty, pretty cool. Now as you look down, you see that temple facade. And we'd be standing on the deck where you might see many of the Hollywood elite, Johnny Weissmiller, anyone know that name? Tarzan. First Tarzan in the, in the talking films was here. He was also a five-time gold medalist in swimming. And his son said his dad came whenever he could and liked to swim in this pool. I'd love to swim in the pool too. <laughs> Uh, so you'd be here now below our feet or 17 dressing rooms. She hires all the workers, and she actually does payroll. So how important is Julie Morgan, Mr. Hurst? Pretty important. She also uh, takes his 90 load railroad cars full of antiques, and she's the one that indexes them. Hurst doesn't even know what he has. So the interior design is also impacted by Julie Morgan. Pretty important. We don't think, I don't think Hurst gets the hilltop uh, without Miss Morgan. She's pretty important. Now, Hurst starts in 1919, but he stops working in 1947. 
he's got a heart condition. And he tells his son, Bill Jr., he's only about halfway done. Now, Bill Jr. responds, hey, give Pops another 28 years. He's still only going to be halfway done. And so if you look over this way, you see the front of the house, there's a limestone from Utah. That's the finished look that Hearst is looking at. If you look over my left shoulder, you'll see the south wing. It has a completely different look to it, and if you're used to construction, you'll actually see the board, the form lines that held the concrete there. It's not finished. Hearst was planning on 10 rooms at the top of the tower to put his kitchen staff. Never completed. They never will be. Because when we receive this uh, from the Hearst, we have to keep it as it was. So things are pretty much frozen in time in 1947 uh, when Hearst has to leave the hill. He is impacted, though, in 1922 when King Tut's tomb is discovered. And many said it set off a gyptomania uh, throughout the world, and Hearst was not exempt. <laughs> He designs that uh, there's a Grand Central Station, New York, Boston Libraries. Okay, Stanford White is very famous in the East, and he comes up with a design. You see these walnut panels on the wall. It gives it color and texture. It's a concrete room. Now, they're, just, they're not ordinary panels. These are 15th and 16th century Italian choir stalls. They would have been in churches. And Hearst brings them here uh, to put inside of uh, his... Uh, his, his little space here. Uh, if you want to take a peek here, and then if you look, you'll see uh, Stanford White is also bringing this French fireplace in 1906 from France to New York. And unfortunately, Mr. Mr. White dies as well as his clients. So this goes into probate. This is able to buy in 1922 at auction. It's 16 feet tall. It's a double mantle piece. Uh, this was in their mind, because this is a true refectory. It's got the 17th century monastery tables that are narrow. Mr. Hurst is probably the kind of guy today who put a basket on the table and say, put your phones there, you're going to talk to each other uh, while you were here uh, in the dining room. Now, this is the only place you can eat. None of the guest cottages have a dining room. Uh, breakfast is served to order. You come in when you're ready. The butler is going to make it. About 2.30 or so, you're going to hear a cowbell ring. They're going to have a buffet set on the table that you see there. Uh, and then in the evening, somewhere after 8.30, Mr. Hurst is going to come here, and he's going to sit in the middle of the table. And his girlfriend, Mary Davies, is going to sit across from him. Now, I hope you don't mind dogs, because Mr. Hurst is a dog lover. So in the early years, behind him in a chair of his own is his Boston Terrier buddy. Now, when Buddy dies, that becomes a dachshund held of Troy. But Hearst is likely going to have a dog here in the dining room with him. And behind Mary Davies is Gandhi, her dachshund. Now, just a bit of a warning. Gandhi's a bit nippy. So you don't want to try and pet her without, you know, some warning. Because she's, she's not as friendly as her dog. But you're going to be here. And you're going to find a nameplate as first-time guests next to Mr. Hearst. Uh, and they want to get acquainted with you. And then the tradition was, as your stay went on, you move further and further down the table. So you might have to sit by the likes of someone like George Bernard Shaw, a Calvin Coolidge, former president of the United States. You might have to sit by Charles Lindbergh after his historic flight. Um, Alice Marble, number one women's tennis player in the world. Charlie Chaplin. Uh, Clark Gable. You, you don't know who is going to be in this room. But it would probably be a, a pretty fun group uh, to sit and be with it was fun. It was lovely. They were known to, to tell jokes and have a great time.
foundation. You can swim in this pool as well. Neither are heated. So bring your wetsuit. You see on the walls, the hand cut tile, a little over two million. And likely you're standing on 20 karat gold as well in the pool, uh, is at the bottom of the pool. 10 dressing rooms for men, 10 for women, marble lamp stands with the original alabaster lids, which lit the pool. Early waveless pool design, you see the gutter, which is common today, but not in the 30s, because Julie Morgan wanted this to be mirror finished, so you see all the reflections. They've taken down the tiles, which had fish, aquatic species from the ceiling and so you don't get that reflection today. Your wristband gets you into a 40 minute IMAX film. If you want to see them jumping off your diving platform. A ladder stairs up the back is how they get up there. So thank you for joining us today. I've got to put you back on your chariot and send you down the hill. But thanks for coming to Hearst Castle today.